Welcome to Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 9th of November. Dollar index has seen a pretty decent drop over the last week, anything from a 1% drop against the Japanese yen to a near 4% fall against the Norwegian krona. Seems traders don't want to miss out on the expected rally in the rest of the world assets that a post-Trump era would signal. The week ahead will presumably be driven by the news of the US election and the Vice President, uh, sorry, the President-elect Joe Biden, uh, looking to see if uh, convincing enough fashion in terms of his win that legal challenges against pockets of ballots or recounts do not open the door for four more years of Donald Trump. There will also be much focus on the Senate, where it looks like the campaign in Georgia could run for a further two months and perhaps still lead to a change in control of the Senate. Price action over the last week, however, suggests traders are positioning for that post-Trump era, which, with the Fed keeping rates at near zero, is seen as potentially dull and negative. Away from the US election, the US macro story is holding up quite well, including the October jobs report. Uh, US data this week will include NFIB small business optimism and October CPI, neither of which will move the markets. The biggest threat to the benign dollar sell-off story probably comes through COVID-19. New daily COVID cases in the US are running above 100k per day, which could prompt state governors to close bars and restaurants again, a move that could hit a very bullish current sentiment. From a technical perspective, dollar index appears now to be en route to uh, testing a, a wave 5 ideal target down towards uh, 90, 88 to 89. 8.4. Um, look for some support early in the week as we retest price cycle lows at 91.75. However, as the 93 area caps any corrections, I'm looking for a test of, uh, of this 90.88 uh, 90 to 89.84. In terms of the Eurozone, the Euro has been lifted by the broad based dollar sell off. Doubt really that uh, the euro will spend too much time above 120 just yet, largely because of the coming downturn in the eurozone economy as lockdowns bite, but also that the US may also be suffering lockdown, which could be bad for risk assets over the coming weeks. However, there may be some underestimating how quickly traders are ready to price a post Trump world. Uh, more pro-trade for the Euro, Eurozone could be one of the key factors. Another reason the market may not be too keen to uh, spend meaningful amounts of time above 120 is the pickup in ECB rhetoric against a strong Euro. Local events for the week ahead are the Eurozone November Centic survey and German ZEW. Of the ECB events in the week ahead, I'd highlight Thursday's ECB forum where Lagarde, uh, the Fed's Powell and BOE's Bailey all speak. So from a technical perspective, the key uh, for me uh, the back end of last week was the euro taking out this descending trend line resistance if we can sustain trade above this 118.50 i'm looking for an immediate retest of the 120 en route to an ideal 120.43 uh, probably see a bit more corrective action then before we try and mount a meaningful attack on the 122 ascending trend line resistance from these levels i do expect a more meaningful correction to play out in the UK, uh, EU trade negotiations are getting into the final phase, with the outcome possibly emerging over the next week or two. Uh, continue to expect an eventual agreement. The ongoing sharp decline in preferences of the Conservative Party in polls should be more, th more than enough reason for the UK government to move towards a deal, given the likely hit to the UK economy from a no-deal scenario. Hence, sterling, uh, sterling risk remains tilted to the upside in the near term. Uh, this week's gains were primarily caused by the euro rally, but during the next week, the sterling leg should start contributing too. On the UK data front, we have the labour market market data on Tuesday. Given the deteriorating economic outlook, we should continue to see signs that unemployment is rising. However, the latest furlough scheme should prevent a rise in the jobless rate uh, to 9 to 10 percent. But as was the case over the past months, domestic data should have limited impact on sterling price action. Uh, the currency reaction to the BOE meeting last week proved that case in point, with all focus really being on these trade negotiation outcomes. From a technical perspective, I'm looking for the uh, sterling to test this 132.55 to 133 area. From there, I think we can see another round of profit taking with a move back to 130 before trying to base again to move higher. 
In terms of the dollar yen, as, uh, as we know, we're trading sub 104 now. While global asset markets are rallying, it's slightly disconcerting. US real yields have not really fallen to justify the move, and instead, it just looks like the Japanese yen is caught up with the broader dollar decline. Here, this seems to be money taken out of US deposits and put to work across the asset and credit spectrum, dragging dollar yen lower in the process. If this benign story, uh, continues to take hold, I wouldn't expect the Japanese yen to lead FX gains against the dollar, but dollar yen could continue to press lower. Fortunately for the BOJ, as discussed in recent weeks, some of its closest trading partners in Asia have also seen strong local currency gains against the dollar. We have the uh, dollar yuan trading 6.59 and the uh, dollar Korean yuan at, uh, at 11.20. This means that the trade weighted yen is not particularly strong and is still some 4% from its March highs. I wouldn't expect the Japanese Ministry of Finance to be too concerned just yet, nor do I expect the market to take too much notice of the Ministry of Finance or the BOG seeing that they are monitoring FX markets closely. It would probably take a disorderly move below 100 and some Nikkei losses to spark a more credible threat of action. So from a technical perspective, I'm looking for the dollar yen to trade lower and ultimately retest uh, prior cycle lows here at 101.20. I expect some initial support at the 103 handle, but as 104 contains any upside attempts, I'm looking for that leg lower to test the, uh, the 100, uh, 100 point, uh, 190 level uh, and the uh, projected descending trend line support before a more meaningful correction might ensue. In terms of the Aussie dollar, as we know, highly sensitive to risk appetite, a balanced short-term valuation and positioning profile contributed to the boost the currency as markets move to price in the Biden election win. The Senate race is leaning in the favour of the Republicans, but the possibility of runoff elections in Georgia may leave some space for market-friendly hopes of a surprise flip in the Senate, and the Aussie should remain a key beneficiary of a more election-related risk rallies. Looking at the domestic drivers, the Reserve Bank of Australia's decision to cut rates and expand QE may have limited ability to curb more Aussie gains, as the bank appears to have shot all its bullets and expressed reluctance to move to negative rates. There's no data in Australia worth monitoring next week and no RBA speakers of note. So external factors will remain a key driver on the Aussie. So the Aussie, um, similar to the Euro dollar, taken out its descending uh, trend channel resistance. We now look for a wave five uh, to complete the current cycle from the March lows, ideally looking for a test of the 75.13 to 76.53 area. From here, I expect uh, a more sustained profit-taking move, um, but certainly any pullbacks early in the week to retest the descending trend line as support should be opportunities to get in on the long side to trade up to this ideal 75.13, 76.53 target zone for the completion of wave five. Uh, as always, traders, you can join me on Thursday for a live market analysis session where I'll be running through all the FX majors and, uh, and some of these FX crosses and commodities and uh, futures markets that we're currently tracking. So that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 9th of November. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next time, thanks very much.